the one thing that I'm, I'm quite concerned about is for boards to hand over the reins of developing AI to their CTO and the CTO's team. And- is- uh, but it's it's just as much about, you know, the capabilities of workers taking inventory on who does what and trying to figure out how to scale their, their abilities and knowledge. And more and more that does not involve decisions that are technology based, but instead knowledge based. Um, so- and I hope that organizations would rather look at the these kind of developments in, developments in, in the AI as a, an opportunity for competitive advantage rather than an opportunity for, for cost savings. So you clearly want a mixture of you know, internal skills there, but also um, external people coming in and consulting, but also make sure it's interdisciplinary. Uh, getting good people is, is important. And- I'll just say on, on this one, I think above the, the dotted line, a lot of it's about having that transitioning to that, to the new kind of culture of democratizing this technology. And then the, the dotted line um, is really where you start to run. I believe if it's going to work well, it's going to fundamentally change what work looks like Mm -hmm. and from a psychological perspective of course we're talking about change management but change management times a thousand you know change management on on steroids just want to start to think about roadmaps and please again huge caveat over this uh this illustrative only Uh, and in terms of uh, how people should be thinking about going forwards, we, uh, we we think it's helpful to split this between organizational impacts, technology impacts and people impacts. The one thing that I'm, I'm quite concerned about is for boards to hand over the reins of developing AI to their CTO and the CTO's team. Is that a good idea, panel? I, I can just report uh, we haven't seen the CTOs be the obvious driver for AI implementations within uh, corporations, frankly. I I found that to be surprising early on, and now it's beginning to make a little bit more sense to me. Um, CTOs can play a role more in integration, uh, but it's it's just as much about you know the capabilities of workers taking inventory on who does what and trying to figure out how to scale their, their abilities and knowledge and more and more that does not involve decisions that are technology based but instead knowledge based. So there's uh, you know an increased importance in HR and management and maybe just a slightly decreased importance on the actual technical knowledge. Um, And the other factor is too, I can't imagine there's a lot of CTOs with deference um, that have AI, like, you know, extensive AI uh, knowledge and capabilities. I think that's, uh, you know, an area of expertise that is uh, in short demand. So I'm not so sure that just being a CTO and understanding technology also brings with it that you have a full understanding of the capabilities of uh, today's AI. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 for me, um, it's really important to, uh, to emphasize the importance of the interdisciplinary nature of all of this. It is not going to be one group of people that is driving all this forward. It literally needs to embrace everybody. Um, but some things I, I would draw out here is the, um, you know, if you're going, it, it's the importance is to go outside and get some ad- advice and start to build some relationships with academics, with people like Chris, Tony, build those relationships and get some advice in terms of going forwards. Deciding on the drivers, uh, we've seen reactions uh, so far in terms of uh, some of the drivers have been cost savings and efficiency gains, yet they're not enough people are thinking about the innovation implications in terms of what they do and how they do it and and just how transformational this could be i think um i think a lot of things we've kind of mentioned before is the you kind of the data in terms of the the knowledge that you're that kind of represents the experience of your organization is kind of a key starting point that's going to enable a lot of the steps to follow and i think business leaders really need to uh, realize that the the biases and, and experiences all through their business is now where the the source of uh, competitive advantage is going to be um, and i hope that organizations would rather look at the these kind of developments in developments in, in ai as a, an opportunity for competitive advantage rather than an opportunity for for cost savings um, i think cost savings you're you're essentially um, removing the the really valuable bias and, and experience that you have in your organization, which should be leveraged. And the way we've been talking about data democratization and 
and essentially model democratization, having giving non-technical people access to this technology, you realize that your competitive advantage is going to happen at a very decentralized manner. It's going to be critical in, in making sure you understand where this value is sitting, making sure that you have the data structures, the data platform that's going to store this data and give people access to actually leverage the more advanced tech as well. Thank you, Oliver. In a moment, I'm just going to invite Tony to say how he would develop a center of AI excellence, as that's the big arrow here. But before I do that, and I would draw attention to just how much organizationally is, is very front end. Most of those arrows are quite imminent within the next two years or so. So I would just invite the participants to reflect on that and how much time they have to think about things. Tony, may I invite you on this center of AI excellence? If this is the thing that's going to be the think tank of, of the organization, how would you put something like that together? So you clearly want a mixture of you know, internal skills there, but also um, external people coming in and consulting, but also make sure it's interdisciplinary. I think that AI has always been a very interdisciplinary um, enterprise, you know, ranging across linguists, psychologists, cognitive scientists, um, computer scientists, and it's not a, you know, people tend to quote AI these days with just machine learning. And they say, well, machine learning and AI are the same thing, but actually there's a lot more to AI than just machine learning. So, you know, look beyond just large language models, just beyond machine learning and make sure you've got the bigger picture in, in there. There's a big challenge, of course, of getting people there. I mean, it's a very competitive space at the moment. I mean, I just lost one of my great research fellows to DeepMind. Trying to retain people is, is really challenging. Mm. Um, but, you know, but there are people out there and there's increasing, you know, there's more talent being developed um, in, in universities and across the world. So, you know, I, I think it can be done. Getting good people is, is important. And, you know, you can build slowly. You don't have to do it all in one go. Uh, start to, to build it and then you can you can grow as, as you get uh, A, the expertise and, and, and B, uh, you can start to nurture your own talent as well to, to help supplement that. Thank you. We're going to have to cover the next couple of slides in the matter of two minutes or so. So I'm going to rush through them. Turning to technology, there's a lot going on here. Uh, what I'd encourage uh, the participants to do is to go away and have a look at the slides, uh, have a look at the, the video that we publish and start to distill th this in, in their thinking. We've got a, a dotted line here in the middle, which is, I think, recognizing that some of this is going to be stop-start. It's going to be, uh, it's going to have peaks and troughs. So recognizing that, but also, again, just thinking about how much of this is front end towards the top of the chart here uh, before we, one can start to leverage the benefits, which is more down towards the bottom of the chart. Go away and do have a think about uh, some of those things. Anybody from the panel just want to give a 10, 15 second comment? I'll just say on, on this one, I think above the, the dotted line, a lot of it's about having that transitioning to that, to the new kind of culture of democratizing this technology. And then the, the dotted line um, is really where you start to run. Uh, let's look at the people side. Uh, we've we've already been talking about the people quite a lot, so I don't really want to spend too much on this. I would highlight two things. One is, uh, you know, obviously the starting point is to assess one's capabilities, but it's also to recognize that the roles that we have at the moment are not just going to evolve. Entirely new roles are going to be created. Uh, one, in, in my mind, is the AI strategist. Has anybody come across this term before? And, uh, and how would you describe an AI strategist? Yeah, I think that's a, a critical role that if you're able to solve for that internally is a huge advantage for any organization. It really involves the understanding of what's possible, the capabilities of the current uh, AI technologies, and then staying on top of the evolution of those uh, more so than it is the how or you know the actual execution elements of it. And I think any organization that has somebody capable of doing that is gonna be, have a huge, huge advantage over their competition moving forward. Mm -hmm. And creating the role development pathways, again, that's the amount of thinking that, that needs to go in. If you think about all of those uh, different types of roles that we had in the previous slide, and each one needs a plan, and each one needs to be planned with the people who are in, who perform those kinds of tasks. The uh, initial engagement needs to be done very, very carefully, doesn't it? Tamara, would you have any further suggestions on that? 
Yeah, again, I if we're thinking old model, it seems kind of like it's going to be a lot of work and really difficult. But if we can really open our minds to what this might look like, it's fundamentally, I believe, if it's going to work well, it's going to fundamentally change what work looks like. Mm -hmm. And from a psychological perspective, of course, we're talking about change management, but change management times a thousand, you know, change management on on steroids. So for me, it's really important to kind of get that narrative going. And, you know, we talked about about what are the drivers and I came up with CIA, uh, you know, cost reduction, innovation or augmentation. And, and start to flesh out with people. It's not just about cost savings and you losing your job. Let's explore what those other opportunities might be. Um, great opportunities for multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary team working. It's pretty hard to do that because human brains like to be in their little silos. But what can we learn through that process, which will be demanded by AI coming into the workforce? I think there's another great opportunity there for for workforce and collaboration. And then, you know, finally, we, we're brains and we're human beings. And, you know, there's some thinking there around, we don't have time to go into it, but, you know, neuroplasticity and how these interactions with AI will, will change our, our brains. This idea of tool or team member, you know, how, how, it, how will this thing be seen? Cognitive load, maybe brain implants in the future. I mean, if you want to go 20 years from now, these are these are the science fiction things that that we're we're kind of quite near to actually surprisingly near to so you know let's get our story straight indeed. as an organization yeah indeed uh samantha made the comment a bit earlier uh, isn't it isn't it about collaboration and those of us who are very much into cognitive diversity the aim of cognitive diversity is this concept called new knowledge creation that actually if you get people working in certain ways they will create new knowledge together. We've got a line here at the bottom, which is about humans and, and technology creating new knowledge together. But actually, the whole organizational side, the whole relational side, the whole um, development of roles and their pathways forwards is going to require the creation of new knowledge together. And that's actually what what's going to have to be the center of organizational culture and that is going to have to be planned for in terms of change program. So change program needs to drive the culture, which focuses on new knowledge creation from now onwards. So at the moment, people to people, but then it needs to be inclusive of people to technology as well. Uh, we're going to draw this to a close. Uh, we left or started with this particular comment, and, uh, and it's still something we'd really like to impress, this idea of having to get your aircraft built, tested, and airborne as quickly as possible. I would like to just come back to these people. Do make contact, do, do have conversations. The importance of, of getting people in and, and, and uh, interacting with your, with your teams, do make use of these relationships. So please take a note of the email addresses and make contact. Let me remind you of a program that we're developing for launching through uh, the group we're calling Difference Dynamics next year called Catalyzing uh, Cognitive Diversity in the Boardroom. That's a, going to be a six-week uh, modular program, really important in terms of driving boardroom performance. And please don't be overwhelmed by what we've given here. But I would ask you to just go away and start to think about it. Do you have any closing questions or comments? We'd love to hear what you thought of the uh, of the webinar as well. Uh, Samantha says, thank you for a really interesting session. Well, thank you, uh, Samantha, also for asking such fantastic questions. Yes, echoing that, some brilliant questions were coming in. So clearly thinking around the topic at, at a deep level. I saw Tony answered that question as well about will it make us all <laughs> will it make us all stupid? And I suppose maybe I'd love to finish on a really positive note, which is what if it could release our creativity? That's a super place to leave it. May I just say thank you all of you who have attended. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your uh, thoughts and questions. Chris, Tony, Tamara, Oliver, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure working with you on this, uh, this project. I'm so enthused by the future. I'm very excited by it. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your insights. 
And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending.